In this video, I'm going to be checking the health of my birds by looking at their poo. That's right, I'm going to be taking faecal samples, preparing them, and looking at them under a microscope. Now, I have to say at the start of this video that I am not a vet, and if you're unsure on the health of your bird, then you should speak to your vet. Having said that, it is good practice to take regular faecal samples, especially if you have multiple birds living in close proximity like me, or if your birds are coming into regular contact with wild birds whilst hunting. Most people have to take a sample to a vet to check over, but I have the facility to take them at home, so I thought I would show you how I do this. By checking the poo, we can check the bird for parasites, more specifically, endoparasites. Parasites can be split into two different categories, ecto and endoparasites. We can check for ectoparasites when we give the birds visual health checks and look at their feather condition, as this group of parasites live on the outside of the bird's body. End endoparasites, however, live inside the bird's body, and that's why it's important to check the faeces. There are a few different types of endoparasite that can be found to infect birds of prey. These are flukes, also known as trematodes, roundworms, aka nematodes, tapeworms, alcestodes, and protozoa. Flukes are found in the intestinal tract and are rarely pathogenic. Fluke eggs are commonly seen in bird of prey mutes and no treatment is usually required. Roundworm infections can show clinical signs with enough numbers living in the host. Many types of roundworm cause no issues in small numbers. The infected bird may have dark brown mutes. Tapeworms can be diagnosed when their eggs are found in the mutes. Like with most infections, the birds may appear low in condition when tapeworm eggs are present. Once treated, the bird may regurgitate or excreet the parasite. Likely the most common endoparasite you will encounter as a falconer is a protozoa called Emeria or Isopora, resulting in a condition called coccidiosis. While clinical disease occurs after ingestion of large numbers of oocytes of coccidiosis, coccidiosis infections are often influenced by other stressors such as poor nutrition, poor sanitation, overcrowding, moving or sudden changes in the feed and weather. Conditions such as coccidiosis can be treated easily and with good weight management and spending regular time with your hawk it can be spotted somewhat early on. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't only ever react to it when the infection hits. You should be monitoring these things to prevent infection from even occurring. And that means regularly checking mutes. I suggest at least every three months. So without further ado, let's go and collect some poo. <laughs> Now to actually take the poo samples, I've got a bunch of these little vials and I've written all the birds' names on each one so I know which sample has come from which bird. And then I'm just going to use this sterile swab to go and scoop up a bit and put it into here. And then I'm going to put the lid on so I don't get poo all over the place. Now when you collect your poo sample, you want to be taking the black or the dark bits. The white part of the bird's poo isn't really poo, it's uric acid. And that's basically their equivalent of having a wee. So we want the actual brown or dark black poo. So we have collected the poo samples. This one is from Peggy the Harris Hawk. Now we have to prepare them to go on a slide so that we can look at them under the microscope. So to do that, I'm going to take just a very small piece of the poo. You really don't need a lot to do this. Peggy's is quite liquidy and I'm just going to put it on the edge of the slide, not in the middle, just on the edge there. I'll try and get a bit more. And you will end up with whatever substrate you have in your sample. As all of my birds are on sand, it makes it a little bit more difficult because 
I end up with a lot of sand in their poo sample, but I try my best to just take the samples from the, from the top so I don't get as much sand in. But this has got quite a lot in it. And then I've just got some sterile water, some distilled water. And I'm gonna add just a drop on there. And then just mix it around a bit just to loosen it all up a bit. So then I've got my cover slide and I've scraped most of the, the debris, the substrate, all the sand towards the edge of the slide. And so I've just got the, the brown liquid part of the, the fecal matter mixed in with some of that distilled water. And what I'm gonna do is with the cover slip, I'm gonna take some of that water just on the edge, bring it to the middle and then lay it down. So you end up with your sample underneath your cover slip. And then that can go in the microscope and we'll have a look. So I've got my slide on the shelf and I'm now just gonna show you how I like to set up and look at the sample under the microscope. I always start with the shelf um, as low down as it'll possibly go and on the furthest away, so the least magnification. And I'm gonna take a look, you have to make sure it's set up for your eyes properly so you see just one nice big circle. And then I'm just gonna slowly bring it up towards the microscope until it eventually comes into focus. I can then fine tune it so I can have a look even closer. And it should all focus sort of together in one go because we put the cover slip on, so it should all be kept at a flat level. And then you can move around. I like to start at all of the, going around all the edges of the cover slip, looking for any signs of eggs which I can't see anything. This is a very clean sample. And then when you find something that you would like to look at in a bit more detail, then you can switch to a, high, switch to a higher magnification. And then it just requires a little bit more fine tuning again. Now I tried filming into the eyepiece of the microscope to show you, but it was very difficult to get the camera to actually see anything. And to be honest, it looks a bit like Saturn. That's the best I could do. And thankfully in all of my samples, I couldn't find anything. Good for me and my birds, not good for this video because it means I can't show you what anything looks like and what to look for. It makes sense that I can't find anything though, as all my birds are in good health and their faeces is checked periodically, meaning I can react before anything gets out of hand. But that doesn't mean it can't happen. A parasitic infection is something I have had to deal with in the past with Skye. The first thing I noticed was a drop in weight. I tried to feed her up, but she really struggled to put any weight on. So I took a faecal sample and I had a look under the microscope and I found coccidiosis eggs. She was treated and it cleared up really quickly, but it just shows how useful it is to be able to do this stuff at home. I noticed an issue, I used the methods shown in this video to diagnose the condition, treated it, and Sky was back to full health within a couple of days, all without having to take her to the vet. That does not mean that you shouldn't take your bird to a vet if you suspect something is wrong. I can do this at home as I studied this at degree level. I know what to look for. And if you haven't got that background or knowledge, then you have to use your vet. If I suspected there was an issue with one of my birds that, but couldn't find anything with my own methods, then I absolutely get to a vet and take a faecal sample. They have more accurate methods than the one shown in this video. While simply looking at a thin scraping of the sample can show results, the vets will likely use a centrifuge and take their sample from the surface that's floated to the top to give a more accurate reading. And if they can't find anything with that, then they're able to run other tests to diagnose other issues. So please, don't think this video is an attempt to get out of paying a vet. If you have a problem, contact your vet. 
If you want to do some of your own research and read up about parasitic infections in birds of prey, there are some excellent books. The one I always refer to whilst checking faecal samples, Veterinary Aspects of Captive Birds of Prey by John Cooper. I hope you've enjoyed this more sciencey video and hopefully you've learned something. If you have enjoyed it, then please like and comment. They really do help out the videos quite a lot. If you'd like to see more Bird of Prey related videos, then make sure to subscribe and consider becoming a member to support the channel so that I can make bigger and better videos. And as always, thank you for watching.